In this video, I am going to show you practically how to deal with encryption and decryption in the data power. So the objective is to give you a demo where I can show you live coding and uh, how to configure data power in such a way that it does the encryption and decryption. I also intend to show you the digital signature over here, but uh, if the video uh, goes long, then perhaps I will have to defer the digital signature creation and verification for the next video. So without further delay, let's get started. To demo you this uh, uh, encryption and decryption thing, I have created a multi-protocol gateway. This is our setup. And uh, you can see that at the moment, the setup is pretty much simple. It has a HTTP front side handler. For simplicity, I have kept it HTTP. And uh, re request and response type as SOAP messages. So it will deal with SOAP messages. Later, you can uh, deal with XML and JSON as you wish. Now, this gateway has a processing policy and everything that we intend to do uh, for uh, encryption and decryption lies here. Please also note that uh, there are two ways to deal with encryption and decryption in data power. One is configuration way, another one is coding way. In this video, I am totally focused on the configuration way. In another video, I am going to show you how to deal with encryption and decryption using XSLT code or gateway script coding. So let's see what is inside the processing policy. You can just remember the name of this policy. It is called cryptographic demo policy. And here I'll duplicate the tab. And here I'll say multi protocol gateway policy and you can see that you have we have cryptographic demo policy over here so let's click on it this is another view i prefer to work with policy in a separate tab if you wish you can click on three ellipses over here and you can change the policy over here itself that's up to you so let's go to the next screen okay so this is the policy now, I have kept this policy very bare bone in a sense that it has four rules, encryption, decryption, sign and verify. And these rules are characterized by the fact how they match, uh, how the match action has been configured. So you can see that for encryption, I have a forward slash encrypt URL configured here. For the decryption rule, forward slash decrypt, same goes for sign and verify. As I said, we will first deal with encryption and decryption and if time permits, sign and verify, else we'll see it in the next video. Now, um, I, I do not have a backend here, right? So first I'll have to make an arrangement that the request doesn't go to the backend, rather it is uh, the, the gateway works in a loopback mode. To do that, I'll have to drag and drop advanced, double click to open it. And here I'll have to choose set variable as an action. So where is set variable here? Here I'm going to make it uh, use the service variable called skip backside and I will set its value to one. This will ensure that the gateway works in a loop back manner. Okay, same goes for decryption rule as well. So again, go here and go to set variable, do the same thing. The set variable thing that I'm doing here is only for this setup. It is not required that you deal, if you are dealing with encryption and decryption, you do it. But this demo will not work without uh, setting it because by default, the multi-protocol gateway will try to go to a backend. And you can see that I have mentioned here a dynamic backend. So I'm supposed to specify the backend in the rules, but I do not have a backend to go. In fact, it is not relevant at the 
moment to go to a backend. We are uh, we will have to see the uh, process of doing the encryption decryption. Okay, so <clears throat> going back to the encryption rule. Now you will have an option here called encrypt. So drag and drop it here. Double click to open it. You can see there are several defaults which are set here. We'll have, we should keep them as is like standard is XML security, envelope method is WS security. By default, they work just fine. Here, what we are supposed to do is we will have to uh, specify the recipient certificate over here. Okay, what is a recipient certificate? See, you are encrypting a message. What is the purpose of this encryption? This message will go ultimately to a receiver and receiver is supposed to decrypt the message. Good. If receiver is supposed to decrypt the message, then here you need the receiver's public key. Again, I'm repeating it again. Here you need the receiver's public key, which means if you are working in a B2B scenario where you have to send an encrypted payload to a receiver, you go and ask receiver to give you their public key, their public certificate. And you are going to configure or you should configure that certificate over here. At the moment, I have a certificate configured over here. If you want to see how to do that, click on plus sign. And here you click on the upload button and click on the choose file. Here uh, you will have to choose the file uh, uh, that the receiver gave you. You will have to upload it over here. And then you click on apply button and that's it. Your certificate is uploaded. When I say your certificate, it means your uh, receiving party certificate over here. There is no need to change anything else over here. If you want to tweak, you can tweak, but there is really no need to change anything over here other than providing the receiver certificate and you click on the done button. Now click on the apply policy and you are all set. You are ready to encrypt the payload and I am going to show you how. So let's get back to a testing tool. As you can see, I have, uh, I'm using a postman and uh, I have a sample payload over here. It simply has some data like customer ID, name, address, line, etc. I have pointed this uh, postman to localhost 8000 forward slash encrypt. Forward slash encrypt is important. Um, why? Because if this it is not here, um, this particular rule, uh, encrypt rule will not be hit and hence will not be able to see the encrypted payload. So it is important. Now, uh, this payload I intend to send, please make a note of what is in the SOAP header, what is in the body. And when I send this, let's send it. See what do we get. So this is what we get. Um, as a response. Now in this response, um, ironically you see you have many things as in the SOAP header. Originally there was no data in the header but we have it here in the header and this is all WSSE security. Why this is coming in the header is because you have selected this envelope method as WS security encryption. What it says is that there are some metadata that is required to be packaged um, as part of encrypted XML so that when it is received at the target end, um, at the target end, they, they should be able to verify that the message is intact plus they should have enough information related to keys, algorithms, etc. that they will be able to um, decrypt the message. So all that is stuffed where inside the SOAP header. So here, so you see, you see this thing here. And then inside the SOAP body, you see this cipher value inside the cipher data. This is your entire uh, data that is, that is uh, in a cipher text format. So this is your encrypted um, SOAP message per se. Okay, here in the SOAP header, you can see 
that you have information like encryption method, encryption key, you have some um, cipher value. This is, uh, this is the key that is uh, present here in an encrypted format. And uh, this can only be decrypted using the matching private key. What matching private key? The pub, you remember that during the encryption process, we provided a public key over here, example.com. Matching private key is required in order to uh, in order to decrypt this data. Okay, so what will happen if I decrypt this data? If you decrypt this data, this will become your key using which you will be able to further decrypt this thing. Okay, so this is how um, it works. It is a usual way in which uh, XML encryption is defined uh, in WS security. This is also called ephemeral key sometimes. Okay, but um, I um, uh, this this key is something which is generated by data power automatically. So I skip that uh, part over here. All in all, you can see that you have a uh, you are able to encrypt the entire XML. Okay, fine. So part one is complete. Part two, how do I decrypt this? To decrypt this, so in, in the second part, I'll pretend to be a receiver of this and I will intend to um, basically do a decryption of this. So how will I do that? I'll create a new tab over here. Uh, huh? New HTTP request, okay. Same thing. So I'll copy it from here and paste it here in place of encrypt now i am going to say decrypt so i'm hitting that path again it's a post and now i'm hitting it with encrypted information so here i would say uh, xml and what the entire xml encrypted thing that that i uh, did here i'm going to put it over here okay fine so encrypted uh, uh, SOAP message is over here. I'm supposed to send it to data power and data power is supposed to give me a decrypted XML. If I do it now, it will fail. Why it will fail? Because I have nothing configured in the decrypt rule. It's simple. It says forward slash decrypt rule, then um, this uh, skip back side. So if I send this message to data power, data power is going to simply echo this message back to me. And I am supposed to get exactly the same response. See, it is exactly same as the request. Okay. But this is not the intent. The intent is to decrypt this and should be able to see the data like customer ID, shipping address, country, etc. etc. So how the decryption will work in data power. Let's go and configure it. Here under decrypt rule, I have highlighted the decrypt rule now. And here I will drag and drop the decrypt part. Double click to open it. I'll keep remaining things as same. In the decryption key, you will have to specify the matching private key. Again, what private key? You remember that during encryption, we use the public key that the private key part of that and that is this example.com. I have generated this public key private key uh, in my previous video. So if you want to see how to generate a public key private key in data power for this uh, experiment, you can have a look at that. But uh, this private key you will need. Okay. And then you see done. Click on apply policy so that it gets in effect. Let's go back to data power and hit this send button. Okay, fine. So you see that you get something back and here you have customer ID, order name, address line. This completes our discussion related to the encryption and decryption. So we have seen how to do the encryption and we have seen how to do the decryption. What is the bottom line? The bottom line is without writing even a single line of code, we were able to do the encryption and decryption just by utilizing data power functions. So you see here we have a, a sign, verify and these kind of functions using these. We, were, we, we did not write even a single line of code 
and we were able to do the encryption and decryption. Now you can come back to me and say, oh, what about the complicated scenario where you have, you are supposed to encrypt one particular attribute and you are not supposed to encrypt the entire payload. Well, that can be done. You can see that in the encryption rule, you have something called field level encryption. You see, here it says, one second. Uh, here it says message type is selected elements so here you can specify what elements you have to specify the x bar what elements you are supposed to encrypt and data power is going to encrypt only those elements leaving other things intact so that is the uh, that is the whole power of the data power uh, it is it's simplifying the encryption and decryption task uh, in such a way that without writing even a single line of code, you are, you are able to achieve this. Now, I think uh, the digital signature creation and verification is something we'll leave it to the next, uh, next video. So that's it for today.